exercise after burn injury. A group of individuals, several with visible burn scars, meet in an open area overlooking a waterfront. It's a Tuesday evening on the sixth floor of Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital here in Boston. Once a month, people who have survived a severe burn injury meet here for support. Tonight, they're trying yoga. A little bit forward and twist to the other side. Seated poses. Diana Tenney was burned over 94% of her body in a gasoline explosion in 2010. Thick, tight skin. I literally thought that I was never going to be able to pick up a fork and eat normally. Um, I thought that I was dooming everyone around me to a life of caring for me. George Passati was burned in a house fire in 1979. And I sustained second and third degree burns over 85 percent of my body and the doctors had given me a one chance in 10 to survive. And Joy Green was burned when she was hit by a runaway car in 2011. I went over 30 surgeries. I survived grueling surgeries, grueling therapy grueling pain. Bandaged in a hospital bed. And yet, they're all here today for a yoga class. Joy is even teaching along with her twin sister, Judy. It turns out, once you've gotten through the initial stages of healing in a hospital and in a rehab facility like Spalding, exercise is an essential element of a successful long-term recovery and a high quality of life after birth. Jeffrey Schneider, MD. Exercise is probably one of the best interventions we have to help people regain what they lost and to combat many of the complications that they um, have acquired as a result of their injury. Dr. Jeffrey Schneider runs the Boston Harvard Burn Injury Model System Center, which is one of four burn injury model system centers, funded by the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living and Rehabilitation Research. Model system centers conduct research and provide innovative treatments for people with burn injury. Stretch the fingers, flex the foot. The yoga class. People recovering from a burn may have challenging complications, including some caused by the hospitalization itself. You can imagine if you're lying in bed and uh, because your injury is so severe, you're unable to even move, you're chemically sedated, uh, put into a chemically induced coma. Um, you know, what we take for granted of normal moving around every day doesn't occur. People like Joy, Diana, and George, who each spent months in a hospital bed, lose significant muscle mass and flexibility. Their healing skin and scars can tighten to such an extreme that it can become very difficult to move their joints. You know, exercise is needed to simply overcome and combat and, you know, get back to sort of where you were in the first place before the injury occurred. Diana greets a young Hi, woman. How are you? Yes, I'm good. I'm How good. are you? I'm good. It's good to see you. Good Physical see therapist you. Jessica oh, Gilbert helped oh, Diana oh, regain oh, range right, of motion in almost every her? joint right. in her body. Right. Where are you going? You know, patients work with us for months a lot of the time to gain this range, and they work hard through pain and through fatigue and even when they don't want to do it. You know, if you don't have full range of motion at your no, elbow, you can't. certainly can't feed yourself. So if a person goes home and they don't exercise and they don't maintain their range of motion, they really put themselves at risk for losing their independence that they work so hard to gain. Of course, it's easy for doctors to recommend exercise and for people with burn injury to grasp the importance of it intellectually. But even after significant healing and recovery, a catastrophic burn injury can continue to cause severe pain, itching, discomfort, and fatigue. And in the beginning, it can feel like exercise makes all of these things worse. Joy Green. I used to have a name for the pain. I used to call it crazy pain. No one can understand it unless they go through it. The thought of doing fitness with these kind of injuries was something I could never reach. It's like, it, it's gonna hurt too much just to move. I can't imagine exercising. It's very difficult to get back to exercising. Just getting in the mail and walking back was enough to wipe me out and I'd go lay down and sleep for two or three hours. And there can be a lot of fear. I was afraid that I would fall if I tried to start jogging that I would tear the areas that surgeons had tried to put back together. I um, feared that I would hurt myself exercising. I'd make it worse. Maybe I should just rest all day on a couch. Long leg scar. Joy knew exercise was important for her recovery, and it had been a huge part of her life before her injury. Running for me wasn't just about exercise. It wasn't just about me getting away from daily grind of life 
It was about being with my twin sister. We had done two marathons together and many road races together. And um, when I couldn't do it anymore, it wasn't that I just lost fitness. I lost that time with my sister. And I didn't think I'd ever get that back again. Judy Catonio. It was terrifying. Watching my twin sister slip away was terrifying for me. I was frightened I would lose her forever. I was watching her be so weak, just doing simple tasks. I, it was heartbreaking. With a lot of encouragement from her sister, Joy started simple breathing exercises. On a dock. I can remember an incident at the rehab center and the pain was intense and she could not rest. So I sat with her and I said, I'm just gonna try this. I said, let's breathe together. We took in deep breaths. I just talked about a, just a beautiful sunny day as we would breathe in and breathe out and I could feel her body calm. Joy shares with the group the story of the first time she tried exercising on her own at home. And I was sitting on the couch for yet another three to four hours watching bad TV. And I was looking at my floor at a one pound weight that my mother had bought me. And I would look at the one pound weight and I hated it. It was like my enemy. And then I got sick of TV. And the next day I looked at it. And then the next day I looked at it. And then finally I'm, I went to go get it. And I started a little exercise. And I, I actually giggled, because I was like, this isn't so bad. I like it. I know it's only one pound, but I'm doing something. It's not my enemy. <laughs> it wasn't my enemy anymore. Yeah. I think that what I learned in, in structured therapy was that everything was therapy. Uh, whether it be the first day that I was home, it took me two hands to make a pot of coffee, but that was my passion, so I made myself a pot of coffee the first day that I got home. Part of recovery from burns is building self-esteem and getting little pats on the back and little accomplishments. So even though they may seem small, for me it was like getting to brush my teeth for the first time because I had such scar tissue on my arms, I couldn't get the razor to shave and the toothbrush to my mouth. That was a real challenge. For Diana, meeting people who had been burned as badly as she had, like George, was more inspiring and motivating than almost anything else. Being around other burn survivors, um, priceless, priceless for in my recovery. When I was at Spalding, they would literally put me in a chair car and carry me to Shriners to the peer support meetings. And at that point in time, I was in a total body bandage, and the only thing that was uncovered were my eyes. And, and George would look at me and he'd say, you have beautiful eyes. Peer support is, the, and the more we learn about this, the more I think we understand this, it's really been a crucial piece to a lot of people's recovery. I can do all I can uh, to help people recover from an injury, um, but having never been through it myself personally, um, there are things that someone who's been through a burn injury can, you know, provide to another burn survivor that I can't. George at a putting green. That support can give people like Joy, Diana, and George the strength to try what can be very scary, exercising in public for the first time. Feeling uh, self-conscious uh, self is something that happens to all survivors that have visible scars. I can remember the first time I went to the beach, I had on a tennis hat, I had my tube tennis socks on up to my knees, I had a uh, towel over my shoulders and people were staring at me you know walking on the beach saying who is this guy you know he looks so different but I had to cover up I wanted to go to the beach and feel somewhat normal and so after after time I was able to take off um, you know the garments and I think as you move towards the acceptance stage of your injury it becomes easier. My burn is so large that I would be totally covered from head to foot to try and hide my scars, so I knew that I was going to have to learn how to deal with it. Um, I am what I am, and, and I look like what I look like. So with the chair yoga, which was my first introduction into public exercise, um, I found that I was usually the one who had to make the approach to make friends because they probably thought that I didn't want to be talked to. So when I started being open with my burn, 
then it, it just opened up um, many, many new friendships. Donning a bike helmet. As hard as it was to begin exercising, it quickly brought rewards. I felt exercised helped with the depression of my accident because it actually helped with the pain I was feeling. When I didn't exercise, I was in more pain. Stretching with her sister. I didn't understand how exercise at that time was actually going to help relieve some of the pain I was feeling. But as I started doing it, I was astonished at how much better I felt. Not only physically, but mentally, I started feeling more positive, more confident. We're finding that you know some of the other non-pharmacological ways of treating pain are equally, if not more, successful than helping burn survivors dealing with their pain. You know, exercise and physical activity, although sometimes might seem counterintuitive, can really help people feel better. Exercise does nothing but ease my burn pain. I may have sore muscles. Diana biking. Uh, I may kind of tweak a muscle or a tendon every once in a while. But um, I would much rather feel a, a sore muscle or a little tendon tweak that I know how to take care of than burn pain. While pain of some kind is often present for people with burn who exercise, they should watch out for what Diana's physical therapist calls unexpected pain. So if I'm stretching your ankle and you have pain in your ankle because I'm stretching it, that's expected pain. And not that we don't pay attention to it, it's not that we ignore it, but it's expected so we'll continue the stretch because we know the benefits of that stretch. So if you're doing an exercise and you have some of that expected pain, if you're doing lots of squats and your hips are getting sore, or your quads are getting tired, that's normal pain. But if you're exercising and you suddenly have chest pain or you know a really significant headache, you know if you have a new pain in general and you can't explain it, that would be a reason to stop activity. With those caution flags in mind, it's important that every person with a burn injury find something they enjoy doing. Sherry Blawit, MD. We all have personal preferences, and sometimes it takes a little time to establish that and to figure out what you like. And so if, if the first go around doesn't go perfectly, I think it's really important to remember not to give up, but to think about potentially other opportunities in your, in your community that might be a better fit. Dr. Sherry Blawit is an Olympic wheelchair racer and she's one of the world's leading experts in adapting sports for people with disabilities. You know, we certainly don't expect people to go from zero to 100 miles an hour overnight. That's not realistic for anybody. The important thing is that you try different options and try different forms of exercise and, and figure out what you love and what you're passionate about. I think that one of the keys to um, people's successful rehabilitation is finding a way to define um, their goals in, in their own terms. Um, and so for some people that might be, you know, becoming a world-class athlete with a prosthetic limb. And for others that might mean, you know, uh, walking their dog or, um, you know, be able to pick up their grandchild um, and play with them. George always loved playing golf. With Diana. After recovering, the doctor said, well, we don't think you'd be able to play uh, golf or tennis because of the amount of scarring on my left arm, which I almost lost. Displays his left arm. George took the doctor's words as a challenge. Putting was a good way to get back into golf. I think putting, you have to be very relaxed to putt. They tell you to be still, slow takeaway with the club, keep your head still. So I think for survivors, that would be good. It's non-threatening, doesn't put a lot of stress on your body parts. Now George plays 18 holes of golf every week. Diana took up new sports like kayaking and Zumba dance classes. The two on the putting green. Don't say you can't do something unless it's really risky, um, but just try. And, and if you don't do it like everybody else does, that's okay too. Uh, when I first started doing yoga, I certainly didn't do it like anybody else did uh, because I had such limited mobility. But the combination of trying new things, uh, trying different things, was the combination that has gotten me to where I am today. The twins jogging. And four years after her burn, Joy was running again. My first time going back out running, I walked out the door and I walked first. And I'm about to go running, but it wasn't gonna happen. Every inch of my body was in pain. My right leg that had been horrifically burned and broken was not ready for a run, barely a walk. So I decided, to skip and I did a little skip 
and it... She grins, shrugs. I thought at first it would make me feel sad that I wasn't running, but it actually it made me feel alive. She nods. Even knowing all the benefits of exercise, sometimes it's hard. There are days for all of us survivors when you don't feel like exercising. It's very difficult to get out of bed. And usually depression is a stage in the grief process that it's normal to go through. So if you're having depressed, those are the toughest days to exercise or do your therapy is when you're really kind of down. But those are the days that I think you gain the most benefit by saying, I'm feeling down today, but I'm gonna do it because you always feel better after exercise. I used to push myself a lot because you know, I was trying to return to normal to play with my two boys who were three and five years old at the time. And it was important to go out and throw the kids that wiffle ball, you know, to be their dad, to make them realize that I might look different on the outside, but I was the same dad on the inside. I could still love them, still play with them, still hug them, still say prayers at night, read them stories. You don't know how you're gonna live and survive it. But I, when I started walking, it calmed down the throbbing, not only physically, but mentally. Without exercise, I think I would still be in the pain I was before. I think it has been my best friend through this incredible, long, challenging journey. Some days I get up um, and I don't feel like doing anything except going back to bed. But then if I think a little bit ahead and I'm going, okay, if I don't go exercise today, I'm gonna sit here at my computer, I'm going to get stiff. Um, so I just play it through and I think about what I'm gonna feel like if I don't go, go out and do that activity as opposed to, I need the rest. My my injury needs the rest. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it needs exercise. <laughs> Burn Injury Model System Centers provide coordinated and multidisciplinary care and conduct research to improve care and outcomes for people with burn injury. This video is a product of the Model Systems Knowledge Translation Center in collaboration with the Boston Harvard Burn Injury Model System Center, funded by the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research. To learn more about the work of the Burn Injury Model System Centers, please visit msktc.org. Visit www.msktc.org for the entire Exercise After Burn Injury Hot Topic module. Producer, Christian Lindstrom. Camera, Stephen McCarthy. Audio, Steve Bores. Music, Easy Lemon, Kevin McLeod. Model Systems Knowledge Translation Center, Cindy Kai, Cynthia Overton. Special thanks, Burn Survivors of New England, Attila J. Ronogu, MD. Lida Espinoza, Emma Hinkins. Simran Kalra, MD. Muji Karim, Jerry LaPerrier, Carla McKenzie, Colleen Ryan, MD, Laura Simcoe, Tim Sullivan, David Vogel, Isabel Biumye. We'd like to offer our sincere appreciation to Joy Green, George Passati, and Diana Tenney for allowing us to share their stories. This video was developed under a grant from HHS. You should not assume endorsement by the federal government.